Hi, I'm Nicole from the Information Lab. In this video, I share my top 10 tips for creating a dashboard for the final round of data school interviews. If you're applying or thinking of applying to the data school, then this video is for you. You might already know that there are a few steps in the application process. First, you choose any data set you like and create a visualization in Tableau. When you're happy with your viz, you send it to the data school. And if they also like your viz, you will be invited to a video interview. After that, if you're successful, the data school sends you a data set and you will be asked to create a dashboard and present it in person. Now, if you're anything like me, then this might be the first time you will potentially deal with a data set you don't like. What do I mean by that? When I was learning Tableau, I created several visits about painters and their paintings, the London real estate market, global warming, sunshine around the world, and more. But whether I was downloading my own data set or participating in Makeover Mondays, if I didn't like a data set, I could choose not to analyze it. But for the final interview at the data school, I didn't have a choice. Of course, I was thrilled to be called back to a final interview. But when I had a look at the data set, I freaked out. I was sent a data set about dogs. I know most of you would love to analyze dog data. But me, let's just put it this way. I'm not exactly a dog lover. I knew nothing about dogs, except for how quickly to run away from them in a park. But even though I'm not a dog lover, I ended up really enjoying the analysis process and I got the job at the data school. So in this video, I would like to focus on exactly this. How do you take a data set you might not like and prepare a compelling dashboard for your final interview? Just before we start, a quick disclaimer. I have not started the data school training yet. As such, there might be things I say or do that are not best practice when dealing with data. That said, if you are interested in applying to the data school, I do believe I have some valuable insights to share, given that I recently went through the application process myself. Throughout this video, we will be taking an inside look at my application workbook. You can download this from my Tableau public profile linked in the description box below. Looking back at the workbook, there are several things I would now change, but I have deliberately not made any changes to this workbook so I can show you my original application. As I already mentioned, I was sent this data set about adoptable dogs with some documentation about what all the different columns represent. Along with that, I received a link to this article. And this leads me to my first tip, before this project, I knew pretty much nothing about dogs, let alone dog adoption. So reading around the subject was really important. On top of reading any articles you are sent carefully, I highly recommend spending some time doing a more extensive research. Using my application as an example, the data was taken from PetFinder. So spending some time on their website, I found a lot of useful information. For example here. What is PetFinder? Well, PetFinder is a searchable database of animals who need homes. It is updated daily and no information in PetFinder is guaranteed. So this tells me that I might need to take some of the data with a pinch of salt. Background research will also give you a better understanding of the context in which your data quote unquote lives. PetFinder lists all the animals in North America who are available for adoption, and it is updated daily. The data set I'm dealing with, on the other hand, is limited to dogs in the United States who are available for adoption on a single day. Doing this will give you a framework to start analyzing the data. Moving on to tip number two. Before worrying about what story to tell in your dashboard, get to know your data. I would say I probably spent at least half the time doing this. Go through each column in the data set and understand what it represents. So for example, let's have a look at the age column. A good way to look at this column is through a bar chart. So we can see how many dogs there are in each age group. It looks like most dogs are adults, followed by young, baby, and senior. This information by itself is not very interesting, but knowing what the data looks like will definitely be useful during the analysis process. 
and you can similarly explore all the columns in your data set. Understand what the data set does and does not tell you. Throughout this project, I caught myself falling into the same traps over and over again. For example, it would be wrong for me to conclude that more adult dogs are being put up for adoption than dogs of other ages. The dataset is a snapshot in time, so it contains information about the dogs that were available for adoption on a single day. This bar chart tells me that more adult dogs were available for adoption on September 20th, 2019 than other aged dogs. But September 20th, 2019 could be an outlier, so I cannot extrapolate this to be true throughout the year. Also, it could be that lots of baby dogs are being put up for adoption, but that they're being adopted at a faster rate than adult dogs. So understanding what the data set does and does not tell you is key in the early stages of analysis. Interpreting data the wrong way can cost a lot of time and be very frustrating. Along with my tip about getting to know your data set is to plot everything you can think of. And I mean everything. You will be given about two weeks to analyze the data set and prepare your dashboard. So you really have time to delve deep into the data and plot like crazy. Even if a graph sounds boring, you might gain some unexpected useful insight by plotting it. For example, I originally thought that knowing the ages of the dogs would be more interesting than knowing their names. But then I plotted this graph of the dog's names versus their sizes. And I started wondering whether people choose what to name their dogs based on how big the dog is. So I calculated the average size of all the dogs with a given name and then plotted it on this graph. From left to right, the dogs have an increasing average size. So dogs named Nugget, Pixie, and Tiny are smaller on average than dogs named Titan, Cane, and Moose. In my final dashboard, I used this graph as a fun and interactive way to draw people's attention to the pet finder dogs. So my key message here is that if you plot everything you can think of, you may find that the data set has more to offer than first meets the eye. Try to be critical and poke holes in the data. For example, here I've plotted dogs' ages versus the year they were put up for adoption. And it looks like some dogs that were put up for adoption a long time ago are still listed as babies. Now, I don't know much about dogs, but I do know that 10-year-old dogs should probably not be classified as babies. For example here, there are three baby dogs from 2007. Let's take a closer look at the data. By the way, this is a very useful trick. You can click on this button here to see all the data that makes up the field in the plot. And let's see the full data. Each row here represents one of the three dogs that make up the field. Each dog in the data set is listed with a URL to the Pet Finder website where it's listed. So if I scroll to the URL column, I can copy one of them into a browser. And indeed, this baby dog from 2007 is no longer up for adoption. But let's try another one. Let me now copy the second URL. Sadly, I think we can safely assume that this dog is also no longer available for adoption. From this, we can deduce that many of the older entries are not entirely up to date. This is a useful thing to know. For example, you might decide to discard the data for earlier years. This also ties back to tip number four about plotting everything. You never know when a plot might turn out to be useful. So plot anything you can think of and then look at it with a critical eye. It is too easy to get really engrossed in analyzing and plotting the data and forget to document what one is doing. You'll be working on this project for two weeks and unless you have a fantastic memory, by the end, you're likely to forget why you've plotted certain graphs or why you've filtered out certain things. So for example, you could take notes on a separate text document. I recommend jotting down information from your background research, 
any ideas you have for your dashboard, and any sources or websites you use. However, I do not recommend being as untidy as I was. Another way you can take notes is to use the annotate function in Tableau. You can access this by right-clicking on any graph and pressing annotate. This is a silly example, but you get the idea. So anytime you have a thought process, you can write it down. Even if you later realize your thought process was wrong, it is useful to refer back to all the ideas that went through your mind. And if you later decide you want to use this graph in your dashboard, you can make a copy of the worksheet without the annotation. Taking all these notes might sound pedantic. However, I found it very useful, especially as I was able to review my notes the day before the interview. During the interview, you could be asked why you discarded some of the data or why you plotted a graph a certain way. This might be the first time you're given a data set with no specific guidelines as to what to plot. When choosing your own data set for the first round of interviews, you will have probably started with a general idea of what you wanted to plot. But for the final round of interviews, you're given complete freedom. So don't panic if nothing interesting seems to come out of the data set right away. If you're like me, you might plot 50 graphs and still not know what to put on your dashboard. And that's okay. Just keep playing with the data set and don't worry. I came up with my dashboard idea only a few days before the interview. Try to find an insight that is not immediately apparent from the data set. All I could think to do in the early stages of my analysis was to create a tool like Petfinder, which allows people to search for their ideal dog. I knew this was a really bad idea. I mean, what's the point of creating a Petfinder 2.0 if Petfinder does the job better anyways? But even though I hated the idea of Petfinder 2.0, it took a lot of effort to think outside the box. Thinking outside the box is not something you can force yourself to do, but I definitely recommend taking breaks from your work to go for a walk, or maybe take a break to have a look at other people's projects on Tableau Public. Sometimes the best ideas for your dashboard can come to you when not thinking about your dashboard. But one thing is for sure, being creative will definitely make your viz better. And not only, you will also have much more fun creating it. You will hear this over and over again from people who've been at the Information Lab for just a month or for several years. Everybody at the Information Lab and the Data School is really friendly and very happy to help you out. Sometimes the dashboard you create might look perfect to you, but somebody looking at it for the first time will spot some details you might have neglected. This was my dashboard before I asked for help. And here was some of the feedback. People naturally read in a Z pattern, so the flow of my dashboard is not very logical. The brightest colors on my viz are the logos, so the viewer is immediately drawn to those instead of to the data. The text is not very well aligned throughout the viz, so the dashboard appears a bit cluttered. As you can see, most of the feedback I got was about the layout and the look of my dashboard. And this brings me on to my final tip. Spend a lot of time on the layout till you love what it looks like. Don't rush this. Data analysis is important, and it is important to have accurate conclusions. But the way your dashboard looks gives the first impression, and that is super important as well. Here is my final dashboard after the feedback. At first glance, it doesn't look like much of a change, but it took a lot of tweaking and moving text boxes a pixel to the left or a pixel to the right and playing around with different fonts and colors, but I personally think it was worth it. And probably, had I asked for feedback again after this, my dashboard would have been even better. Sometimes it will feel like a waste of time putting so much effort into making a dashboard look beautiful. But the truth is that you can have the most amazing insight, but if your dashboard doesn't look good, nobody will want to look at it. Plus, having a dashboard you love will help you feel more confident during the interview. And here is a bonus tip. There are so many different ways to make a great dashboard for your final interview, so don't take my example as the end all and be all. You can find amazing example dashboards on the Data School website, so have a look at all of those. When I was applying, these help me draw inspiration and understand what I like and what I don't like. 
And finally, this is likely the most fun job application you will ever prepare, so enjoy it. I hope this video was useful and feel free to message me on Twitter if you have any questions or want to get in contact with me.